Conley. Um, I am an ambassador diamond. I've been with It Works Global going on five years. Prior to joining It Works, I had um, been working on Wall Street uh, in investment banking, specifically in the private banking division, which is basically just working with clients who have uh, a net worth of $50 million or more. Um, so I specialized in uh, mutual funds to basically make the rich become richer, um, essentially. It's pretty much what I wanted to do um, my entire life was to work in the corporate space and banking and live in New York. And um, that was kind of just like my, my dream career. So that's what I went on to pursue in college. College. I was a business major with a concentration in finance, went on to get my MBA, um, landed some pretty great internship opportunities, which afforded me the chance to get an offer with JP Morgan in New York um, in 2008, which was like right when everything was like falling apart and banks were, you know, uh, pretty much going out of business. And so for me to be able to land a job during that time um, was great, but it was also a lot of stress because we were all overweight, overworked, understaffed. Um, but one of the things that I realized in my capacity at the firm was that, um, you know, I really, I was, I was slaving. Like I was feeling myself, like I was at work. Um, can everybody mute oh, them? Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, can you mute your phone, please? Yes, I'm trying. All right, so um, what I realized was that I was getting in work at work most times by 7 a.m. Um, a lot of nights I never left before midnight. Um, and I did that for about three years. And then once I finally transition to not being the super bottom of the totem pole then I moved up to better hours which was getting to work by eight leaving before nine um and by the time I finally transitioned out of my job I think my hours were more like 7 30 to 7 p.m which on Wall Street is just like oh my god that's amazing life is great um because you're now only working 14 12 hours a day um, but one of the things that I realized was that I was always going to be the employee. I was always going to be the worker. I was going to always be the one missing holidays with my family, not having a social life. Uh, you know, I had some severe chest pains one night that ended up sending me to the ER only to find out that I had uh, ulcers due to stress. Um, and so I realized that I was doing all of this, working so hard, and even with all of that hard work, I was never going to be the client. Um, I was never going to have the net worth minimum to be sitting on the other side of the table. And that was just like very defeating for me. You know, it was just one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, you know, even if I give my best, show up, put my head down, work really hard, and even if I go all the way to the top of the company, you know, unless I'm the CEO himself or like someone on the board of directors or like a really high role, even if I'm like a super senior VP, I probably still would not be a client being, you know, in the employee capacity. Most of the people that we were servicing were entrepreneurs or they um, had inherited wealth from people in their family who were entrepreneurs. And that is by the railroad, Rockefellers who built almost everything in New York City, people that invested in oil um, that, you know, now hundreds of years later, their great, great grandchildren were benefiting from their decisions to kind of uh, do their own thing. And so that was kind of the moment in time where um, I had kind of started deciding that I wanted to transition out of corporate America. Um, and so I just felt like for me, it just wasn't where I wanted to go. Like I loved my job in the sense of it was a great foundation. I was around the smartest people in the world. Um, some of the experiences that I had uh, rubbing shoulders with those type of people, the events that they put on, the different um, 
just opportunities that I had was something I would definitely not change. And so I like to always kind of put the disclaimer out there that I'm not the person that's going to say, oh, go and quit your job, because I think that every phase and season of our life plays an important role in who we become. But I think that there will always be a point in time where we start feeling this very this this season of discomfort or we'll start feeling some type of tugging on our spirit um and that's what it was for me it was just a, a tug on my spirit that kept saying you you know you you've served your time like you've done what you've come here to do and there were just things that were popping up all around me that were just obvious clues that it was time for me to move on um, but the, the thing that I struggled with was that, you know, you always hear people say, oh, you should get paid for your passions. You should pursue the things that you love. And that was not very clear to me. You know, like I knew different environments that I like being in, the type of people I like being around. But when it came to, you know, especially creating a business that made a profit and, you know, affording a lifestyle that I wanted, I didn't really know what that would be. Um, and so one of my girlfriends, um, around the same time that I was kind of trying to figure out what was next for myself, she ended up starting her own cosmetic company. And um, she reached out to a couple of her friends like, hey, I'm getting ready to start making lipstick in my kitchen. Um, I want to make like a completely vegan product that doesn't have all of this ridiculous stuff in it. And then I also want to like make expressive colors that aren't just, you know, the norm and all this stuff. And, you know, this is like the one friend that we're all kind of like, you know, she comes up with the most brilliant ideas, but she's also like the crazy person that will like be fearless enough to go and do it. So we were all kind of on board, like, hey, you know, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be you, like, we'll support you. So she kind of reached out to all of her friends that had different talents and gifts and was like, hey, you're good at this, you're good at this, and I would love to, like, have you come and help me um, build this brand. And so I was one of those friends that was fortunate enough to be uh, in her brainstorming session, and she was like, hey, Alina, like, I would love for you to help me launch this, So like, I would love you to put together some events, because she knew that I loved doing events, um, but I would also like you to be the head of sales, and so I was like, okay, cool, but mind you, my background was in financial services, so that had nothing to really do with sales, like, I was on the side that was completely driven by the stock market and numbers and all that kind of stuff. It had nothing to do with me pitching the final product to someone. So my first my first question was just like, you know, I'm going to do whatever you need me to do to get this off the ground, but why me? You know, like, why would you want me to do sales and I have no sales experience? And um, she pretty much looked at me and was like, Every time you try a product, every time you go and buy something new, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, you know, you go into the restaurant around the corner, within a couple of days, I've gone and purchased it myself. Like, I remember specifically her example was I had bought my first iPad and I pretty much told her, I had pretty much convinced her if she did not go and buy an iPad in the next week or two, she was like losing that life. You know, like that's how passionate about the thi about things that I like I am so much so that she went and bought an iPad uh, a few days later. And her whole thing was just like, I need somebody like that representing my brand. And honestly, looking back, I think that that was like a moment in time where I think that there are there are moments where God really uses people that are closest to you, people that you may not even know, um, to really just be like your angels here on earth to just like make things really real for you. And they start, start speaking life into you that you may not even understand at that moment, but then it, end up, it ends up coming to pass. So for me, that was a moment in time where I first realized that I did have the gift of sharing, um, that I did have the gift of influence, um, and that the things that I liked and that I was passionate about not only impacted my buying power, but it impacted most of the people that were around me. You know, a lot of my friends value my opinion. Um, you know, I had just started building a following on social media and was sharing, you know, my journey. I was, I told, I pretty much went on Instagram. I joined Instagram probably the week that it came out. I'm a super like techie girl, always been that way. Like 
have had like Apple computers in my home since I was like five years old. So I get that from my dad. So I remember the week that it came out, one of my coworkers came to me and was like, oh, you need to download this app. It's called Instagram. It is really cool. And they have like all of these filters that make your pictures look like they're from the 70s. It's dope. And I was like, oh, that's what's up. So if you go to like any of my, like if you scroll all the way back to like what, 2000 and nine or ten or something like that like it's nothing but just like all of these like super old looking pictures because that's what people use instagram for back in the day just to create filters for their pictures to make them look like retro or whatever but i say all that to say i was literally pitching instagram to my friends like y'all have got to get on here you know i'm getting so fit because i'm starting to follow all of these fitness people i'm starting to get so positive because i'm following all these people that are posting these quotes and nobody got it like nobody like nobody was like they was like i'm not trying to get on another social media platform i'm just trying to stay on facebook and so once again, just a moment in time looking back that I realized that there have been several clues in my life that made it known to me that having a product, having a passion behind a product or a thing or a story, whatever, and then being able to share it and having influence over other people's buying power was something that was destined for me. Um, so anyways, I say all that to say I started working with uh, Melissa on the lip bar and it went from her literally being in my kitchen um, telling me she's about to make li lipstick and I'm thinking she's crazy to turning into this huge global brand that's now sold in Target, Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, um, just, you know, uber successful. It's really, really hard to watch someone so close to you fulfill their dreams, you be a part of it. And then just wake up and be like, oh, well, I guess I'll just go back to work and do what I was doing. Like, that's just not going to happen, you know? Uh, working with her lit a fire in me that I never wanted to go out. Like, the way that I felt, and this wasn't even my company, but the way that I felt just, like, being hands-on and being creative and just having no limits and just being able to pour myself into something and think about how this could impact so many women, how this could impact confidence and this and that, and just being creative with just all free will, that was something that I didn't experience at my job. You know, everything at work was just, oh, you know, cut and paste. You're doing the same on PowerPoint and Excel every day. You might spend a few sentences for the, the appropriate client, but there wasn't any like just freedom to just do your thing in that capacity. Um, and so I was like, I want to live this life. Like, I want to live in a world where I can create fearlessly and in the process of doing that, make a whole bunch of money and also create my own time, um, you know, my own schedule. Uh, uh, and, and then, you know, just really create a life that I love that I don't have to vacation from. And that sounds cliche now because we hear it all the time, but that's what I wanted. Like, that's what I wanted in my life. And so I decided that you know, through that experience, I wasn't going to let that flame go out. So I started reading like crazy, reading books about entrepreneurship, reading books about mindset, uh, personal development. And then I made a vow to myself that, that I was going to uh, no longer just write down all of my ideas and all these creative things that I had in my brain, but I was going to actually start fulfilling them. Like, I was going to start taking a stab at them. Whether they worked or not was not, not my issue. I was just going to go for it. Um, so needless to say, um, one of the first projects that I worked on was I decided to create my own social media app. You know, I love the space. I saw an opportunity for some things that were not on the marketplace. Um, and me and my line sister created an app. Um, it was on the iPhone store for about two years. Um, so that was like my first company. And, you know, probably a year, I set a year for me to quit my job, the point where Lip Bar, Girl Talk, all of that stuff started competing with work because we couldn't take meetings, we couldn't grow our businesses because we were still working for somebody. And in March of 2013, I was like, it's time to go. Um, you know, of course, there's always a temptation. I remember like the week that I was getting ready to put in my two weeks, my manager put me in a room and I'm like, either she's going to fire me or she's going to promote me because I have been like doing nothing at this job for months. And she was pretty much like, 
you know, I know that you haven't decided like what's next for you or whatever, but we love you. You think we think you're great and we want to offer, you know, you a promotion and this and that. So more money, a new title, like all of this stuff that glit was glitter and gold and music to my ears. And at that moment, all I could think was like, all I could see in my mind was like a ball in a chain. And I was like, no, like, I don't care. Like there's no money that you could pay me that will replace what I've been feeling these last couple of months. And I just straight up told her and I was like, you know, I appreciate it. Um, you know, and her whole thing was like, you don't even have to take the promotion. The promotion is yours. So that if you ever decide to come back, you have, you know, this title and you don't have to start from whatever level. And to me, that was something that I felt it's like when you are in those seasons, you know, you still got to bring your best. You know, you still have to, even though I know that I started stacking off towards the end because I was in my own space for the six years that I was there, like I worked my butt off so that by the time I left, everybody supported me. I had really gained some skills that were transfer transferable into the entrepreneurial space. I had made relationships with people. One of my very first investors for my app was my very first manager who was like a multimillionaire. Um, so it's like you always want to perform in whatever space it is. Um, so she gave me the promotion. I told her, you know, you know, I'm moving on. I got to do my own thing. And my manager, who's I've looked up from day one, literally looked at me and she was like, I admire you so much. She was like, you don't even understand. Like I've watched you, you know, work all day and then go home and work on this and your businesses and you've now done this and you do events all weekend. I don't know how you do it, but I admire you and I support you. And if you need anything, if you need any, you know, introductions, like I'm here for you. And I just felt like that was just such an amazing transition. Left my job a month after that. Um, randomly on Instagram per usual saw some before and after pictures of a thigh one had cellulite one did it they claim that the cellulite magically disappeared in 45 minutes um and I was preparing for my birthday and I had already purchased this little two-piece short number and I was like my my thighs ain't together this looks amazing what is it started scrolling on the girl's page for hours looking for a, another thigh or a stomach that looked like mine finally found one and was like yes like that's what my thigh looks like you know i need to get this went on the site saw that for i was about to become a customer saw for like virtually the same price you could become a distributor and have the opportunity to make money here i am i had just quit my six-figure paying job and i wasn't really trying to live in my car so i was like okay this could be like a cool little side hustle for the summer everybody that i know needs a wrap or needs more money why not um message the girl and was like hey um you know i want to get some wraps but i'm also thinking about becoming a distributor Within minutes, she emailed me back and was just like, you need to choose. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it was no webinar invite. It wasn't no flyer come to this one team, one mission. She was just like, you need to choose. Like, she didn't say her name or nothing. <laughs> and, you know, in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, he always says successful people make decisions fast. And I had been reading that book and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to read too much into it. I was going to spend the same amount of money on the product anyway. Instead of being a consumer, let me put myself in a position to at least make my investment back. And I was just like, all right, I'll, I'll join. Um, she was like, all right, cool. I'm going to have my friend call you. Like she didn't even call me herself. Okay. My sponsor did not even sign me up. She had her upline call me. Her upline took my information. I had a different shipping and billing address. So y'all know how that goes. She ran my car. It declined because she didn't ask me. So I got charged double. I was pissed about that. I should have just walked away then, but I was just like, whatever. And it was nothing, this whole customer service and this whole onboarding, I probably didn't talk to them for like another two weeks, okay? And then my sponsor calls me and she was like, why don't you have your four customers? And I was like, first of all, who are you? Like, I've never met you. Like, I don't know who you are. All I know is your name is Get Fitting on Instagram. What is this business? I, w I got my kit sent to Atlanta because I was moving from New York to Atlanta. So I wasn't in Atlanta yet. I was in D.C. at this point. I was like, I haven't even got my kit. Like, I'll look at it when I get to Atlanta. And she was like, you have 15 days to get four customers. And I was like, well, I might just return this because I don't like your tone. Because first of all, you've been rude from the beginning. 
And she was like, listen, I'm not trying to be rude. We just going to push you. Mind you, here I am, okay? I've just gone through a year of personal development, working with the smartest people in the world, making tons of money, and this random chick, get fit and go, is telling me she's going to push me. So my best friend was in the car, and I have never told this version of this story. So I know Antoinette is like, I've never heard all of this. I'm literally just remembering all this. And I'm in the car with Sharice, and she's on speaker phone, and Sharice was looking like, who is this? And I'm like, what do you mean you're going to push me? I'm like, I'm good. I, I have work ethic, this and that. She was like, okay, good. Well, let's see it. So at that point, that's when I was all about like, I'm getting ready to slaughter this get fit and go girl. Like she doesn't even know who she's messing with. Like I'm the queen of like, get shit done, you know? So got back to Atlanta. Um, she had actually moved two customers under me because she clearly didn't have faith in me. And she was like, uh-uh, I'm about to get this fast start. So she gave me two customers. And I got my next two customers. Um, and next thing I know, two weeks later, I was um, executive. Four weeks later, I was Ruby. Eight weeks later, I was Emerald. And then 90 days later, I was Diamond. Five months later, I was Double Diamond. Um, and then I said Double Diamond for a year and a half. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, that first five months was just a whirlwind. It was a complete whirlwind of me trying to uh in the first couple of months just get Meredith off of my back who is my sponsor and we are thick as thieves we were thick as thieves and when she was still working the business full time but in the beginning it was all about like it was like a silent competition between us because she was trying to push me and I was trying to prove to her I didn't need to be pushed like I was good you know and so because she had me under her she was always promoted every month you know, she was always a step ahead of me because all she had to do was build a little ruby leg or whatever because I was doing my part. So I was like, she had she had given me the login to her e-suite. So every month I would sneak into her e-suite and see where her check was. I don't even know if she knows this. But I remember the month that I promoted to Diamond, she promoted to Double and preliminary commissions dropped. And I logged into her account and she had, I want to say like $5,600. Her check was like $5,600. And I just remember because my checks were always her, like the say so, say she got paid this month five thousand or whatever her check was. The next month, that's what I would typically make, but a little bit more because I had a little more volume than her, and more people, and more personally enrolled people. So when I saw she made fifty six hundred as a double, I was like, Bitch! like I'm about to be paid, you know. And so literally. I didn't tell her. I was so excited for her, but I couldn't tell her that I snuck into her easily. I just remember like calling Prince and being like, yo, like this girl just made all this money off of me. Like I'm about to be lit. And so, um, so anyways, what ended up happening was, you know, I had this fire under me all the way to diamond. And then, but what I didn't know, because I was just kind of ignorant on fire was that they were pushing me because they were trying to get promotions, right? You know, you never know like why people are pushing you. And then once you get there, you're like, oh my God, you bitches were using me, you know? And so, but you don't know because you're like so fresh in the game. So after I went diamond, all the phone calls stopped. Like, like uh, my sponsor stopped calling me. The girl uh, who she had signed me up, who had promoted to presidential off of my diamond, stop calling me. They stopped stalking me and harassing me, asking me for my charts. Everything just stopped. And that was the moment that I was like, oh, like y'all don't need me anymore. And y'all are not checking for me anymore. And nobody cares if I promote to double this month. So now I really got to promote to double to show y'all that I don't need y'all and that I'm great and I'm this and that. And so I say all of this to say that in the beginning, I built with just, I was just being competitive. Um, and then it became out of vengeance. And then after completely doing all of that with no real intentions, just like a money chase and trying to prove myself to other people, promoted to die, double without them. And I remember my upline, her upline messaging me like, oh my God, you just promoted to double. Did you know that? And I was like, yes, I knew that. You didn't know that because you haven't checked for me. Like, get out of my line. Don't come for me now. You know, now the e-suite is changing or whatever. And literally, the day after I went to old, literally, I think at least 40 people on my team quit. Why? Why did they quit? They quit because I was not working this business for the right reasons. 
I was working this business just to make money. That whole, oh, find a why, I never even knew what that meant. I had never even logged into the East. We had never done any training, okay? My first rap party was three hours long. I had never heard of the party pad. Um, I'm a true blue. I don't know if y'all know color personalities, but I'm one of those people that I'm just like, listen, this is too many words. I'm just here to have fun and make money and go to these, you know, whatever, go turn up somewhere with my money and that's it. You know what I mean? So I say that to say that this business um, gave me a taste of what it could be like and then it was snatched away. And I think that now five years later, I know that it was, he, God gave me a little taste of what success could be. You know, he gave me a little taste of what it could be, but he was like, the way that you've done it, you built this entire business on ego. Like you think that you did all of this, you know, like you think that you're a hard worker. You think that you have willpower. You think you better than Meredith. You think you better than this person. You think you so creative. Oh, well, how about I just take all your people away? And what are you going to do now? You know, and I literally sat in the bed for at least two weeks, didn't touch my e-suite, didn't call my team, was just stick to my stomach because I had dropped a lot of money on my promotion over $2,000. My check was not over her $6,000. Um, I just felt dumb. You know, I was like, all of that for what? To prove that I was good enough. And in the meantime, I sacrificed relationships. I had been cursing people out on my team about they BV and they this and they that. I wasn't telling people that it was an auto shipment for the loyal customer program. They were calling me like, why is this running? I'm like, first of all, who are you? You know, <laughs> I'm playing dumb. And I was just not working this business from the right space. So I, you know, I could have just left it and been like, oh, well, that was a good run. I was only supposed to be here for 90 days anyway. But I used it as an opportunity to teach me a lesson on it's okay to mess up, you know, like it's okay to come into something and be, have a natural gift and the natural knack for it and still be coachable. Like it's okay to not, you know, know everything. It's okay to uh, perfect your craft and mess up and start over. And it's also okay to put your all into everything when nobody is looking, you know, like uh, for the, I would say my hardest working days in this business was well before anybody knew who I was. Like Mark, Cindy, Pam, nobody knew me, but probably Antoinette and Zadia and a few other people. Like they did, like I was doing calls for nobody. <laughs> like it would be nobody on my training calls sometimes. And I would just do it for the recording. But I, I worked my hardest and I created consistency and momentum when it didn't make sense when it was no people following me. Nobody really knew if I had it, but I was, I was committed to the process of me becoming the best version of myself. I wanted to become a leader. I wanted to um, become a business owner. And I was like, this is the best way to do it. You know, like I could go and start a franchise or a traditional small business right now and making these kind of mistakes would cost me thousands, if not millions of dollars. But yet, I only got to spend ADBV every month to keep getting practice on becoming a better version of me, a better CEO for my business. That's the lowest cost situation I know. I can practice social media strategies, marketing strategies, uh, sales strategies, training, coaching, like all of these things, human resources that you need for bigger businesses or traditional businesses. I can get all of that practice here for the low cost of ABBV every single month and I have the opportunity to make unlimited income and, and so I went to my first event as a as a diamond I went to my first event got super inspired by the company realized that it works as a company was nothing like I thought it was um, it was so much more it was so more authentic and genuine and that's when I fell in love with the culture I fell in love with the the humility that the the founders had it was so different from what I had come from, you know, like in, in banking, everybody is like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm the, the hottest thing on the street, you know, like the, it's not about help the next person. It's about step on the next person to get to the top. So coming to a company that teaches you to love others as you love yourself. And when you do that, we'll pay you for that. It was a complete difference for me. 
And so um, it was, it stripped me of everything that I knew, everything that I thought defined it, my, defined it, defined who Alina was, you know, whether it was, you know, me being fly and living in New York and having this social life and being, you know, in the, in the know. Now God was putting me in a company that people were looking at me like, you're a what? You're a rap girl, Alina? Like, don't you have an MBA? Like, weren't you just an investment banker? And now you're wearing like, it works gear and sneakers. Like, what are you doing with your life? You know, it, it stripped me from being around the cool kids to being around broken people that didn't have confidence, that had never done a business, who came from broken homes, who had never seen uh, anything like this. And it made me get around people that forced me to come become compassionate. It forced me to learn people skills. It forced me to um, get people from low places to a place of success and it just became a true passion for me so needless to say here we are five years later and it's been an amazing journey i'm super excited about 2018 um we have almost 15,000 people on our team now and that right there even just gives me chills because i mean it just means that he really trusts me and i don't take that lightly you know like I, I completely forgot about this Zoom. I'm going to be honest. Um, but she texted me and was like, I didn't hear anything back. Are you coming? And I immediately like dropped what I was doing. And I was like, Let's, I got to get home because I take my team and the people that um, are coming after me, you all success is what's most important to me. You know, like this is something I committed to a long time ago. And so when I wake up every single day, I'm thinking about how can I make this easier, better, funner, you know, cooler for my team, for my prospects, so that they can experience what I have experienced. Not just financially, not just the freedom of time, but the the come to Jesus moments that I have experienced in this business in terms of looking inward and changing everything about who I am as a person. If everybody could experience that, we would literally be living in just an amazingly thoughtful world of people who have been through a lot, have come out of it, and care enough about what other people are going through to make other people's success their priority. If I can help people go through an experience like that, it gives me a reason to just like work really hard in this business. Cause I know for you guys to be successful, you will have to go through that, you know, and you will come out on the other side being like super prepared, uh, a better version of yourself, feeling super fearless. Um, and then when you go, you know, past it works to do other things, you will always look back and be like, this experience like truly equipped me for like what I needed to be and who I wanted to be. Um, and so that's all I have. Woo! <laughs> I said, I never heard that version. I'm like, Okay, give me this tea. <laughs> I know. I love getting on y'all's calls because y'all think y'all know me so well, but you don't. I always have something up my sleeve. <laughs> Good. Um, so after all of that, well, I know um, one question that um, you kind of answered, but you didn't, you know, kind of finish it. But someone had asked, since you were at Double Diamond for a year and a half, like what, what really like took you out of that rut? That was just like that aha moment. Like, all right, it's time to go triple. You know, honestly, it wasn't a rut for me. Like, I think that that first two weeks was a rut, but the 15 months wasn't a rut. So the two weeks of me, the two weeks was a rut of me having to really look in the mirror and be like, you really messed up. You know, like you did that all wrong and you really burnt some bridges and a lot of times, to be completely honest, when we look at our business, if we are very real with ourselves, a lot of the areas that could be better in our business start with us. You know, oh, my team is not working, oh, this, oh, that. But if your team saw you working a little bit harder or saw you overcoming something that didn't work out the way that you wanted to or saw you being more positive or saw you being more consistent, they will fall in line. I've always found that to be the case. You know, in the months that I you know, don't perform as well, or my team as in general, volume drops, people don't enroll, it's typically really aligned with what I'm doing. And so when they say the speed of the pack is the speed of the leader, that is the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. That for me has always held true. So I, I don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out what I can do to change everyone around me. I start with the internal job first, because as soon as the leader starts moving, 
so that and it just starts trickling down to my team so once I finally got into my whole you know getting back into my reading um getting back into my work getting on YouTube getting involved in events getting around like-minded people to get my thing moving I just started going you know I went to my first conference probably two or three months after my rut um and my conference just it was an eye-opener for a lot of the things that I had been doing that was unnecessary you know, I did a lot of recreating of the wheel, not because I necessarily wanted to, just because I didn't know, I didn't really understand the business model until I went to conference. I didn't realize that simplicity always wins. You know, simplicity creates duplication. I was doing stuff that only Alina could do. You know, I was using tools that only Alina could use because I'm tech savvy. So I would get team members that would be like, oh, like that was super dope what you did, but I don't, I don't know how to do that. You know, and then they would feel defeated or they feel like their stuff wasn't as good as mine. So then I started using only like free tools and things that people didn't have to pay for, things that people could like Google how to use it so that nobody could give me the excuse of, oh, well, you're good at that. Because that's what they would do. Everything I would do is, oh, well, I can't do that because because of this so I stripped my business of all, all things extra and just started using everything was on the iPhone like most of the stuff that I did whether it was flyers Google Hangouts like all of that stuff people could do right from their phone made it super simple so there could be no excuses um, I cut down on anything extra that was in my business that just wasn't producing income um, and then I just started being consistent with it. That was the biggest thing. It was like, okay, these are the five things that gets me leads. This is then what I do to close people. This is what I do to train people. And then I repeat the whole process. And I just did that every single day, every single week. Um, and, and my check was going up. So I went from, I promoted to diamond the next month I had lost my rank back down so, I mean, I had promoted to double. The next month, I lost my rank and went back down to diamond. So that was like September, I went back down to diamond in October. Didn't re-hit double again from October to February. But in February, when I hit double, I hit, I made $11,000 as a double. So I went from a January getting paid like $1,600 in January of 2014 as a diamond to getting paid 11,000 a month later less than 30 days later as a double 11,000 as a double okay so it was a rut but it wasn't it was just like no it was part of the journey because had I promoted to triple and got my title I probably would have been back on my ego trip like what I'm in VIP what y'all doing what's up what y'all little diamonds and rubies talking about, you know, because that's who I was back then. I was very much into titles and this and that, you know, and just trying to keep up with what I thought was like what cool, not cool people, but what sharp people did, because that was how I identified myself. But God humbled me and was like, listen, I'm going to reward you for your hard work. But at the end of the day, nobody sees your check. So they don't really know that you're killing it unless you go and tell them, which is against compliance, you know, exactly what you're making. So I just want you to be successful in your own zone. Like nobody knows that you're back here killing it because you don't have the rank to go with it. You're just a little double, you know, but I'm rewarding you for your efforts and your consistency by growing your check. Um, and so I set at double without the rank, without the title, without the VIP benefits with the company. And then eventually I like to say that the rank caught up with me, you know, cause I was already working at the ambassador level. Okay. Like some of the stuff that I was doing as a diamond ambassador is not even doing it to be completely honest. Like I worked like an ambassador when I was a diamond. Antoinette, no, like I was out here doing stuff that Cammy and them came out with a year later and my team would be like, Look at it. Look at it works catching up with the young and free again. Yeah, they always trying to keep up, you know. So I took my business serious enough where it was kind of like, okay, y'all don't recognize me as a top leader and a top earner and top 10 now, but I'm working like that because eventually y'all to catch up to me, you know, and that was kind of how um, I did it, you know, and that that worked well for me because I didn't get caught up in the stuff that really doesn't matter. Um, so went triple um that was cool you know but honestly like my check yeah my check was much different as triple because I got another payout but it wasn't that, that much different because my double check was so high because I had the volume you know with triple I just got an extra bonus and I had the title now and so then five months later I went presidential so I would say that I was just embracing the journey without the ego and I was okay to deal with setbacks and growing pains and people quitting because I was like you know 
I was already supposed to be gone. It works says give us a year. And at my 11 month mark, I was making $1,600. And I was like, okay, it's been a year and y'all haven't done nothing for me. <laughs> okay. This little 1600 ain't cutting it. My rent is almost 2000. Like, what am I going to do? And the next month, right at the year mark is when I made five figures a month. And I was like, oh, okay, I see you guys. Like I'm a focus. I'm a, I'm a lean in and like get it done. And I just, I just got real focused and I stopped letting the other stuff distract me. You know, I think that's what a lot of newbies and even myself deal with in the beginning. It's like, oh, you look to the left and the right, especially on Instagram. It's like, oh, every day is a different business that you can start or something that you see or something on your heart that you always wanted to do. But if you could just stick with this and get it right, master it get the money and then you can do the other things much easier because you really focus in on something like this you know for at least a year a year or two yeah i like that um the ego thing i definitely put that behind me behind me when i went double two because <laughs> i was like all right i'm i'm done i'm done with that i'm done um so i do have a question just because um Today, I put into our group that, um, you know, I want to be intentional for 2018 and, um, you know, let's, let's put what rank we desire to truly hit and, you know, almost 10, 15 people put diamond. So I do want to hear, you know, how you went diamond so that they can kind of try to strategize how they can go diamond next year. Yeah. You know, diamond is such an easy rank. And I know there are people like, what? I've been trying to go diamond for two years. Diamond is a very uh, easy rank in my mind because it's three rubies, which means that if you have a 90-day a run of consistent work, you can go diamond. And the reason why I like that is because anything, pa anything past 90 days at when you're running is really not sustainable right so like 90 a lot of times they talk about in the industry how most people that are making a lot of money in this industry did it in a 90-day window right so i mean you could have been with a company for two years and you're making tons of money right now but most of the money that you're making right now came from that one 90-day run all right and so i like that you can go diamond in 90 days if you pop a ruby each month because it kind of gives the framework of like what the rest of your career will be like um so i think that the key to going diamond is preparation for a 90-day run so this industry also doesn't it doesn't work well for people that are just kind of like dragging their feet and doing a little bit here, come back three more months from now and be like, Oh, let me get one loyal here. Let me get another loyal in five months. Like it doesn't work like that. You know, like our commission start over every month and they kind of, you know, are built on the previous month or whatever. And so when people, you know, come in in January and do a little bit, throw a party, and then we don't hear from them again until April, you're basically starting over every single time. You're not creating any momentum, which means that it's just not a good business plan for this industry. So you have to pretty much commit to at least a consecutive 90 days. Um, this time of year is perfect for January. January through March, you know, that's peak season for us. Um, and it's a good window of time to also have an ideal candidate for both distributors and loyals. Because obviously, on the physical side, people are looking for New Year's resolutions. Um, on the financial side, people want more money in the new year. They don't want to be poor anymore. So it aligns with what's going on in the marketplace, right? Um, and so how do you prepare for 90 days? Is number one, you have to pretty much like decide, like make a decision for the next 90 days, this is my focus, okay? So what that means is that anything else in your life that takes your focus has to be completely nixed for 90 days. Um, and there's probably not a whole bunch of stuff that you're doing that you can't just give up temporarily. You know, if you go to brunch every Saturday, you're going to have to give up brunch every Saturday and replace those with like coffee parties on Saturday morning so that you can get your brunch fixed, you know? So like find ways to make sure that every moment that you're not at work, you are working your part-time business. That's number one. Um, and then for those of us that, you know, have husbands, have kids, it's also about making sure that your supporting community is on board with your 90 day run. 
because if you have a husband and kids that like you know see during that period and they don't know what you're getting ready to do like if you haven't had the conversation with your husband like baby I'm getting ready to focus go all in on this business you know my coach told me that if I could just drill in for 90 days use my weekends and my evenings to work this business I could see a significant growth in my income and really lay the foundation for my business it'll be so worth it you know if they don't know that that's what you're doing and then all of a sudden you're not home every weekend you're up every night you ain't barely looking at the kids they're gonna be like you need to quit you know like you need to quit where are you you know and so you got to have your tribe on board that's really important and then you got to work backwards so meaning like I talk about how going diamond is three rubies that means that if I know I need three different rubies on my diamond chart I'm not gonna wait until March to try to pop all three rubies at the same time I'm gonna break it down I'm gonna try to get a ruby in January try to pop a ruby in February you know for somebody to go emerald and then try to pop that last ruby in March for the full diamond chart instead of waiting to the last minute that also makes it where you you know have a goal every single month that you can then build upon um, so the, then when you break it down even further into each month if you know okay this month I need to pop a ruby what does that look like that means there need to be five people that got at least 400 in volume okay me personally I spend the first half of my month making sure all of those boxes are filled, meaning all the distributors, all five of those people are in place. Because I could go and get a million loyals today, but if I don't have the team members I need for the chart, it doesn't matter, I won't promote, right? So I spend my first half of the month pretty much gearing everything towards the business opportunity. So that means that I'm doing Zooms, I'm doing opportunity calls, I'm hosting parties, I'm going through my hundreds list and reaching out to people and saying, hey girl, you know, I'm been looking for some people to partner with as I go into the new year. I'm a talent scout for people who are driven, this, this, and this, listen off characteristics that you think they have. I, I, you know, one of the first people that came to mind was you um, because of X, Y, and Z. If I sent you a video, would you be able to watch it? Most people will be flattered. Oh my God, I never thought about something like that. But I love, you know, I'm so th thankful that you thought of me. Sure, send it over. Okay, great. They watch the video. You ask them what they like best. If they think it's something that could be a good fit, because you really want people that think it'll be a good fit, then they'll say, yeah, I can sign up on Friday. I can sign up on payday. You know, if you know you need five people and 10% of the people that you're going to talk to will be what ends up getting your five, that means you need to talk to 50 people. Okay? So it's a pure numbers game if you know you need five distributors and really you only need three and then you need to help one of them get two if you know you need three distributors talk to 30 people okay so in a 10-day period you talk to three people a day that's not a lot of people or if you want to do it in a five-day people a five-day window to give yourself a buffer you know you talk to six people a day or i don't know if that yeah, that adds up okay so how do you do that uh, one of the ways that I've been signing distributors lately is through Instagram story polls. I, I sign seven distributors literally from doing an Instagram poll. Who's, who's been thinking about partnering with me? Who could use some extra money? And the thing that you do on the poll is it'll, it'll default to yes and no. I change it to both yeses, basically. I'll say, yes, I'm ready, or yes, but I'm a little nervous. So either way, you're interested, okay? So then I follow up. Hey, I saw you completed my poll. I put a screenshot of the poll in there because they all be always be like, what poll? What are you talking about? Bitch, you hit the button right here, okay? It's right here. See your name on it. Don't act like I'm stalking you. I hate when they do that. It really pisses me off. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You see your name right here? You hit the poll. Oh, my daughter must have hit it. Your daughter is too. She didn't hit it. You're lying. You wanted to get in on it. Now you should. Whatever. So... I send them a screenshot because I hate when they try to play me like they didn't do my poll. And so anyway, I digress. So I'm like, all right, um, you know, a lot of times if they've been following my story, like, and that's why I really build in the Instagram story now. I don't even really do a lot of, pro like I post on my regular feed, but I do more prospecting in my stories because I feel like it's a stronger lead. Meaning like if people are really watching my stories, they really are intrigued by what I'm talking about. 
you know, like they're not just randomly scrolling and they happen to see me. If they're looking at my stories, they're interested in what I'm talking about. So most of the people that are in my stories know what I do for a living. So it's not this whole, oh, what are you talking about? What are you partnering with? Even though this girl was slick the other day and she posted my poll talking about she want to partner with me. Then I got on the phone. She was like, oh, yeah, I want to partner with you to do a kid, a kid and mommy event. What? But whatever. It's a networking event. Okay. You just never know what these people are going to say. So anyways, um, yeah, so I've been getting distributors from the poll and basically what I do is, you know, I'll say, Hey, I saw that you, you said that you were interested. Um, I would love to chat and I immediately try to get their phone number because I want to get it off of Instagram as fast as possible to dig deeper into why they're intrigued. Um, once I get them texting me, I normally will say, Hey, have you ever watched any of my overview videos? Do you know what I do? And sometimes people say, girl, I don't watch your whole YouTube page. Wonderful. Well, let's set up a chat since you already stalked me. Great. We can go ahead and sign you up. And then there are other people that are like, oh, well, I kind of know what you do, but I really don't. So before I even waste my time and get on the phone with them, I send them my opportunity video, which is typically one of the videos that me and Fallon have done. Most recently, I've been sending the one that says, um, um, you know, when, when, what's it called? Um, when opportunity knocks that's the video on my youtube that i've been sending recently that's been closing people um and then from there i just sign them up so i'm gonna still rock out with that instagram poll it's been really working for me um nothing else has working for me personally other than um people just coming to me because they've been following me and they're like oh hey i was one of your customers 20 years ago and i just lost my job help me you know and i'm like okay so fine you can join my team and so I have a lot of those um what were we talking about oh so going diamond so yeah so you get your distributors and then you go on a loyal customer run it's all about volume um I would say you know typically I say half people do rap parties but you know especially if they're not in a same same city as you a rap party could you know they have a full 30 days and you only got two weeks for them to get volume unless they're in the city with you i would really focus on them identifying out the gate you know at least 10 people that they can call and then i would just literally get on three ways with them and start reaching out to people and trying to close them or have them send out text messages to people like hey i just launched my health and what my health and beauty business you know um my coach told me that one of the best ways to get great feedback on these products is to get people that i trust and love to give me their honest opinion and for you helping me, I can slash the retail price 40% off. Um, when I was thinking about you, I know that you just lost your edges from your baby. So I would love for you to test out my hair, skin, and nails. It'll only be 33 per month for three months. Do you think that you would mind testing that for me? I'm like, oh, yes, girl. Thank you so much for thinking about me. 30, no problem. What do you need from me? Your car great i literally have all my newbies do that they rack up like most of my new newbies get like eight customers these days because i have them write a list of 10 in case some people don't have any money or they don't want to support them or whatever and i get the volume out the gate i get my christmas cash and everybody's happy and that's really it guys like that is really it i think that the biggest thing for going diamond is not skipping out you know it's kind of like don't skip leg day don't skip Mondays, all those little fitness rules. It's the same thing with It Works. It's like show up for work every day. You know, like the tasks are super simple, but if you miss a day, you miss action. You know, like today I was like super busy prepping for a lot of stuff that's going on. So I didn't get to do a lot of Instagram stories. So I don't really have a whole bunch of leads. But normally, like every day, I'm adding to my hundreds list because every single day I have new people commenting and shooting me DMs and all that stuff because I'm showing up every single day you know so the more consistent you can be with the little bitty tasks then eventually it becomes like oh i actually do have five people on my team that all have 400 that was pretty easy let me do it again next month let me do it again the following month let me do it again the following month you know and then you look up and you're rich that's it <laughs> okay well let's look up and look be rich <laughs> Um, okay, so I did have one person ask um, about what is a good book to read um, that you can recommend right now. So I know you're huge on books. So Yeah, I think that um, 
I mean, it all depends on like what you're, what kind of book you're trying to read. But if there's a book specifically about our industry and network marketing, I like the um, Get Over Your Damn Self. I feel like that book is pretty modern and covering what the industry is about, the different tools that you can use, social media, parties, you know, different things in terms of like coaching your team versus what do you do to build your own business. Um, she kind of lays it out in a very like direct way. So I would say that's a good, a good holistic read. Okay, well, that was all the little questions that I had. I don't know if anyone else had any other specific questions um, to ask. So you can unmute yourself for a few and um, ask the questions. No questions? Y'all was so hyped. I know y'all got a question. <laughs> I got a question. What if you're not like just the party type? Like I've had quite a bit parties canceled on me. So what is like, I guess the alternative for that? So yeah, the parties that have been canceled are they you inviting guests or is you got a host and then they're getting the I had them inviting guests, so I was like, you get the free wrap, you know, that situation. And then now, one that I hosted, it was okay, but it wasn't like how I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that when it comes to parties, so I think that first of all. Anybody showing up to a party, whether it's one or two people, in my opinion, that's bomb. Like, if I could just get one guest, like, I'm halfway there. You know, if, I, if my goal is to get four customers for my distributors and I get one at a one-person party, like, that's bomb. So I think that, you know, making sure that your expectations are of, like, oh, if there's going to be 20 people here, that's a good party. You know, make sure you have them where it's realistic. But I will also say for in-person parties and also virtual parties something that's been really helping me because i kind of experienced the same thing especially when i'm bringing on new people and they do their parties like i went to like at least four or five parties and like nobody showed up and i was just getting irritated like listen i'm eight months pregnant i'm not trying to be out here y'all ain't got no guests so i think that one of the things that helped us was putting in a little more effort in the back work. And I did a Facebook live about this and I kind of, I did an analogy where I talked about how when I was in college and I had just pledged and basically our, our pro fights will always be like, if y'all party is not packed to the rim, like it's going to be a problem. You know, like that's just not a good look, especially like when you knew and you know, you want to have the best parties. And basically in order for us to make sure that our parties will, were popping, we literally had to go door to door inviting people. And not just passing out flyers and being like, hey, come. But literally, we might be at one freshman guy's door for like 10 minutes, like cracking jokes, telling them they were cute, you know, like doing all of this relationship building so that they basically would be like, I want that Delta to come and pick me up and take me to her party because she was like, she's so pretty and she wants to hang out and all this stuff, right? So literally, we would go room to room securing these guests. And so I kind of, when I, when I thought about that, I was like, we are not putting in enough effort to make sure that we're creating emotion to get to these parties. You know, it's kind of like for me, when I'm getting ready to add something to the cart, you know, like if I haven't gotten enough emotional connection, that thing can sit in that cart forever. But if I have, like, I have certain products where people may like, some of the people that I follow that I've purchased stuff from, Prior to them launching their product or doing their event, they do all this promotion leading up to it. You know, they give you previews of the chapter, what to expect, what's going to be in the book. They show you how to use the planner. They show you what to expect at the conference. They emotionally draw you into what you get when you put that, when you push that purchase button. And so the same thing kind of goes for these parties. It's like, it's not enough to send a text like, hey, come spend your money with me. Cause that's basically how it reads to them. 
it has to get, you have to get them emotionally connected. So one of the ways that I've been doing that is, first of all, I've had them, and this is for virtual parties, I've had people put together videos um, to post like in their virtual events that are very high energy, that really introduce people as to why they are excited about this, what their experience has been thus far, so that people that are looking for a similar experience are like, well, let me hear what she has to say. I have them do it in a way where they're giving just a little bit of information that has people intrigued, but they're not saying, oh, by the way, you're going to learn about It Works Global today, because guess what? Nobody's going to come. But if they say, y'all, you know, I've been a stay-at-home mom for five years, okay, and I, you know, I've been chilling and I've loved, I've been loving that, but I just needed to start making my own money. You know, like I've always been an independent woman. I want to help my husband. And honestly, I just want to go shopping. So I partnered with some super dope women who are very business savvy, who have been coaching me for the last two weeks on how to make money from my smartphone. And my coach told me that tomorrow she's going to make time to get on here and go live with me and talk about what we've been doing. So of course, all her nosy friends, all her broke friends, all her good friends are going to be like, what is she doing? Let me show up. They RSVP and they're there. It's a packed house. They want to know why this person is so happy, why they're smiling and why they're talking about they're making money. That's an example of uh, getting people to be on like opportunity calls or virtual parties where we talk about business and product. For physical parties, um, it's more about the personal touch as to you wanting that person to be there, right? So like for my new girls, I tell them, do not send out any text messages, any e any of that until you have picked up the phone or you have gotten in front of this person and invited them to their party, told them how much them being there would mean to you and how much you know that them being there is going to be exciting for them, right? So don't spend all the time saying, hey, I really need you to be here for me, but no. Hey, girl, what are you doing on Saturday? This is on the phone. What's up? What you doing? What you, oh, for real, y'all watch this scandal, me too. Call me on the, call me on the commercial break. Hey, girl, what you doing? So, Saturday, a couple of us are getting together at the house um, because, okay, I know you're going to think I'm crazy because I'm always trying something, but I just got my hand on some products that have my energy through the roof. So I'm, I got with this girl, she's going to be bringing over some samples. And I was like, who, but all my mom friends who need energy to come over and sample this stuff. Um, are you free? Yeah. What, what is it? Girl, I'm going to tell you more. Everybody blowing me up trying to get the address. Let me call you back. Okay. So getting them intrigued and excited where they know a little bit, but they don't know a whole bunch. And you're just super excited to have them there. The personal touch. If it's older family members, it's like, auntie, I don't know if my mama told you, but I just launched a health, health and beauty business because you know I'm trying to put little right right through daycare. And it would just mean so much for me for you to be there. Don't even worry about it. Bring your wallet, leave your wallet at home. I just need y'all in the building because it would really just make me feel like supported and loved. That's what you do for like your aunts and stuff. So I go to parties all the time where it don't be nothing but like old aunties that think they just come to support but then we get to tasting and sampling and putting a little while on their bags and now they want three hundred dollars worth of products okay so it's all about creating the suspense the excitement or already using the existing relationship that someone has with the prospect to pull the support card people are not doing enough work on the back end to secure the people in the in the building and the follow-up the day before you know, because two days out, I may say I'm going to be somewhere. Just like I told Internet, I'm going to be here tonight. I forgot. I don't, be, I don't know day to day. I don't even know what my name is. Okay? So I need a text that morning to tell me, don't forget, you know, I can't wait to see you. Okay, great. I'll be there. You know, so a lot of people are not sending those day of text messages. They're not having people actually say, yes, I'm coming. You got to listen to those confirms. And until you get at least three to five, you need to keep inviting more people until you have at least 10 people say yes, because you know only half of them are going to show up. So going back to the whole numbers game. So that's my advice on that. I think Deanna had a question too. I think I saw her speaking too. I did just a really quick one. Um, in your opinion, which works better, the in-home parties or like an online party? Because I'm in an area where I don't know a lot of people. So like, 
I guess for me, what would you, what would you suggest? I mean, honestly, I think that they both work really well. Um, I think that it just kind of depends on like, you know, the week. So like if this week, you know, you didn't meet anybody that wanted to host the party, then, you know, it's kind of like for me, like if I don't have a party schedule in person, then I'm going to do a virtual one this week because I want to try to do some type of party every single week. But, you know, I may go somewhere this week and meet somebody, you know, at the mall and give them a blitz card and they want to host the party in two weeks. So the week that they're hosting the party, I might not do a virtual party. So I think a combination of both. If you have a party, you need to be doing virtual parties every single week. And then a lot of times what I'll do is when I'm, if I'm also looking for a virtual party host, I'll target people that are in my area and then I'll give them the option. I'll say, Hey, you know, you can either do this from your phone or if you want to be in person, it's even, you know, it's even more fun because you get to taste and try these products. So if they're in the area, they'll be like, Oh yeah, let's do that. I, you know, my people are more offline anyway. They'll never get on here anyway. You know, so I've had a lot of people that were initially supposed to be online hosts become in person so it's it's all about just leaving the options open and seeing like what what's gonna pop off that week yes because diana (laughs) i um i i just i would love to hear you know hear you see see or hear you have a good um party just because i know you live by people you don't know i'm working on it i promise <laughs> all right do we have any other questions what time is it oh 9 41 so yeah i know we have like 20 minutes to the diamond call so i had a question um it's but it's for um hold on one second there you go girl mm-hmm. good okay it's for loyal customers like when you like how do you get them to i usually i have this one girl okay i have this one girl that literally have stayed with me over at least a year now she orders all the time um i've seen how like i guess you just have that one good loyal customer i just love the product but then you have those ones that like strictly wants to stick with the three months like how do you get them to stay longer than three months because you know i go over the whole spill of you know you just don't have to get one product you can always get another product you you know even if you don't get another product you're a loyal customer for life um you can always switch it up you know i i go to the whole different spill of trying to like really like be persuasive and tell them that you can just like this one girl she got the hair vitamins but she's not taking it she's not consistent she will not cancel so i was like hey listen if you cancel now it's a fifty dollars fee, but what you can do is I kind of push the keto to her, and I push because I know she's fitness. I push the um, grains to her, and she was like, "No, I'm gonna just stick with the hair vitamins." And then after my third shipment, I'm gonna cancel. So it's like, how do you get them to stay longer than the three months? Because you have those ones that's like legit just stay because they love the product, but then you have those ones who is like precise to the point, and once that three months is up, they want to go ahead and cancel. I mean, I think that it's going back to the whole, like, focus on what you can control. Like, if you are having the the dialogue around other products that they can use, that's, like, that's your role. Um, and so they're adamant, like, no, ma'am, I'm not trying to try them greens. Like, I was just here for my edges, and you're not getting more than, you know, a couple of hundred dollars from me. Then that's just that, because you never know. Like, I had a, a friend who was hair vitamins, and then... Like after her three months, she was done. She didn't want nothing else. She wasn't interested in any other products. Then we came out with the keto coffee and she hit me back like, hey, you know, I never want anything else, but I want the keto coffee now. You know, so I think that constantly having like some type of um, newsletter that lets people know how they can get in contact with you is always good. But going back to the same thing I was saying about the party, it's once again about creating the emotional uh, intrigueness and excitement about what you're talking about. So not just trying to persuade someone, you know, that's not something that I've ever done. You know, five years, I don't persuade anyone. You know, I'm not pitching to anyone. The way that I look at it is I'm using products and I share the journey that and the results that I have and that my clients have. 
And you know how women are, especially if they see one girl winning or one girl getting snatched on a product that they have in their pantry, they're like, hold up. Like I need to get my life, you know? So one of the things that I do that's very um, good for my retention or for me getting additional customers is once a month, I send out an email and it's really short. It's a, the subject line says, look who's getting results. And it's either a picture of me getting results with a new product or it's one of my customers that sent me before and afters. I, anytime a customer sends me before and afters, I send them um, like a sample pack of something as an incentive. Because so many customers do not focus on getting results. And if they do get results, they didn't take pictures. So I was like, if I could get more pictures of different body types and different products, I would be popping. Like, cause people love pictures. And so in order for me to get more pictures, I started sending out emails saying, hey, do you have some really good before and afters? Send them in for a free wrap or send them in for a week supply of greens. So I started getting a whole bunch of pictures from my customers and then I would I would feature them and people love getting featured and I'll say oh look who's getting results you know Alina from Atlanta just tried the keto coffee and lost 20 pounds um, order yours today and then I'll literally put a button that says order and I always get either text messages saying hey I saw your email what did the girl do I need to get those results I need to start over or I never use this so that's another way it's like get them excited let them see what these things do um, let them see you using results especially since you just had the baby that's gonna be a great way to get a whole bunch of people you know re-engage with the product now that we got all of these new kits coming out and these new incentives for people this re-engagement because even if people have tried the product nine times out of ten they don't got fat again all right so revisit those fat cells let me help you for a second time get slim and trim okay okay we have a little over almost 18 minutes left but um i know someone said blitz tips and then we'll just leave it at that um, I always refer people to, um, if you go to my YouTube page, there is an entire series of three videos called Belly to Belly, um, which are really great tips for building offline and blitzing, um, from some ambassador diamonds. So for the sake of time, I'm going to encourage you guys to go to those videos and see the blitz tips. All righty. Well, thank you so much for having it. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. And um, I will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for having okay. me. See you at conference.